This despite temperatures soaring above 30 degrees Celsius for days. To understand how this freak storm even came about, I spoke to Jeff Cornish, a meteorologist at AccuWeather. I was at home and off over the weekend, and I saw some of the video on Twitter and was just blown away uh, by the magnitude of the hail uh, and how it had accumulated. Now, the hail, storms, the hail, hail storm and hailstones primarily fell in just a 20-minute window, a very brief period of time between 1.50 and 2.10 in the morning or in the middle of the night. Uh, and uh, the hail size was about normal. Typical hailstones fell, but there was such an incredible volume of them uh, and they fell onto a very warm surface that there was rapid melting. Uh, and you can see uh, we are in a very uh, mountainous area. Uh, Guadalajara is uh, around or a little over 1,500 meters in elevation. So we have a lot of greatly sloped roads and a lot of the hail accumulated and rushed down the streets and accumulated in some lower lying tight uh, communities here. Uh, about six suburbs of Guadalajara had this incredible accumulation uh, of upwards uh, of about five feet or 1.5 meter deep hail in the lower lying spots. So Jeff, how unusual is it to have uh, a hailstorm of this in intensity in the middle of summer? Well, it's uh, an incredibly rare, rare event to get it to this magnitude. Hail does typically fall in places like Guadalajara in uh, the, uh, the summer months. Uh, and again, sometimes people might confuse sleet, which is also frozen precipitation in the wintertime, with hail, which is really more of a spring and summer frozen precipitation type. Uh, if you go high enough up there into the atmosphere, even in the hottest climates and in the middle of the summer, uh, we're still dealing with colder than freezing air if you go enough up there to where a large airplane would fly. Uh, and with strong thunderstorms, you get a lot of vertical motion, updrafts and downdrafts. And right at the interface between the updraft and the downdraft, you get hail formation. Uh, how concerned are you about flooding? I mean, all that ice and hail has to melt. Well, the flash flooding problems were immense in the five or six or seven hours that followed the event. Uh, but uh, unlike a tropical storm or a hurricane that will lead to days of rain, this was really one event that was pretty specific and finite in terms of its time scale. Uh, so some of the municipalities there around Guadalajara uh, loaded some of the trucks up and uh, they, they shoveled the, uh, the hail away uh, and they were able to at least take a lot of that away. Now, obviously, we're not in their location right now. I'm sure there are still some mounds of hail around, but the greatest flash flood event and flash flood threat uh, was primarily uh, over the weekend in the day that followed this event. And Jeff, finally, talk about climate change, how all of that plays into play here with extreme conditions like this. Well, there have been a lot of extreme events in recent years, and they did have a very rare snow event in Guadalajara back in 2016. Uh, and in this case, uh, hail production and thunderstorms are all tied to moisture in the atmosphere. And there is a slight increase in the amount of moisture in the atmosphere uh, in a, a warmer climate. So there are a lot of climatologists out there who say that extreme rainfall events and some hail events like this may be a little bit more likely uh, due to changes in the climate. Now, meteorologists do become a little bit uneasy when we connect one specific weather event uh, with changes to climate because uh, a lot of climate change uh, is a very gradual process and it's more of a subtle thing that can have significant long-term impacts to agriculture uh, and plants and animals and uh, other things like that. Uh, but it may have been a contributing factor. And our thanks to Jeff Cornish.